The Tories hate the young. They're at war with the young. Now, I was on Good Morning Britain talking about this today. Before you watch the clip, do hit like and subscribe. Boomers felt optimistic. Everything we were getting was a positive for us because we'd started off from a low base after the war years. Um, whereas millennials are starting off from a high base. So everything they are expecting, it's, it's slightly entitled. Sorry, Owen. Oof. Um, I know, I know. I'm not going to call you a snowflake like that, but you're slightly entitled. So, but because you're starting off from that high base, you feel disappointed with everything you're getting. I think, you know, I think basically every generation has faced challenges and we're not really comparing like with like, are we? I mean, the difference is the attitude. I said, we expected nothing so everything we got was a bonus mm. millennials expect everything so everything is a disappointment millennials wow. born between 1980 to 1995 i'm a geriatric millennial that's the i was gonna say that you're you're all all my on line. By my aging fingernails you're the entitled generation <laughs> no, Owen. i think that's unfair i'll give you one basic reason so half of baby booners own their own home by the age of 30 for millennials it's 30 percent it's not because millennials are spending all their money on cappuccinos or netflix it's just one basic statistic. 40 years ago, the average home cost three times the average salary. It's now eight and a half times the average salary. Now, it, it, just housing costs, mm -hmm. you spend far more as a percentage of your income, even if you're a private renter. And one of the reasons for that is, take right to buy, mm -hmm. lots of homes were flogged off but not replaced. 40% of the council homes that got flogged off under right to buy and are let out by buys like landlords. And they're charging twice the rent. Mm. So if you're a millennial, you don't get council housing. Don't even think about it. You'll be stuck on a waiting list until you're probably actually in your retirement. You, you can't get a home often because house prices are so, are so expensive. But the other thing is the private rental sector is a rip-off. You're paying huge amounts of your wage packet on private rents. Yeah. And you've, you've made one other point, which I think is really important, and that's how things seem to be getting better. We've gone through the longest squeeze in wages since the defeat of but Napoleon, long before us. you were born, <laughs> uh, in the Battle of Waterloo. Now, when I say a war on the young, I use young pretty loosely here, partly for my own benefit, given my age, um, because for a long time, millennials have become synonymous with young. But actually, the oldest millennials are now 42, and the youngest are 27. So actually, a generation which has actually been whacked over and over again is actually coming very much of age, that's going to have very bad long-term consequences for the Conservatives. Whilst Generation Z, who we didn't even talk about, they're aged between 27 and 11. We can't erase that generation because they're also getting battered. Now, I don't want a case of one, two, three, four, I declare a generational war. None of that, because what actually, above all else, matters is class. And, you know, you have rich kids who go to Eton with trust funds, and you have 1.9 million pensioners in poverty. But overall, what I'm talking about is this decline in living standards for so much of these younger generations, whilst for older generations, there was a sense and expectation grounded in fact of life getting better and better. That's what's suddenly gone into reverse in Britain over the last few years. Now, as I say a Tory war, it's not just our incumbent government to blame. It is the economic system we have, a broken economic system at its root, though Thatcherism in particular redesigned that in ways which have had catastrophic consequences for younger people. And, you know, look, let's have some nuance. I can concede to Dawn's ar argument more than I did in the cut and thrust of a GMB discussion. Food's become cheaper. There's a caveat. You've probably known, noticed that's gone slightly in reverse um, as of late. That's set to be a longer-term problem on the horizon. The climate emergency will make food prices more expensive in the years to come. Also, the rise of ultra-processed food has damaged our health. Cheap, unhealthy food uh, has meant rising levels of obesity and cancer. But, you know, again, on the flip side, we've had advances in, in, in healthcare because of the great work of scientists, technology. We've got more gadgets now. Though, obviously, if, more, if people were to choose between an affordable, secure home and more gadgets, I think we'd know how they choose. So I think that answers that in terms of living standards. But it is interesting how a political discussion nationally is so often shaped by older right-wing types and it revolves around taxes, the level of taxation, when housing costs is far more of an issue 
for most millennials and the Gen Zs who've left home, it takes up way more of their stagnating and often falling wage packets. But there are other ways that young people have been hammered as well. They've been saddled with debt, not least if they go to university. We're talking tens of thousands of pounds. Now, you might go, well, more people go to university than they used to be the case uh, when it was free. That is true, but you need to go to university to have access to more jobs than used to be the case. So you have to be saddled with debt in, in many cases to have access to the sorts of jobs that otherwise you, you just wouldn't be able to do. There's also things like childcare costs. I mean, it's interesting how people, partly because of the housing situation, deferring or delaying when they have kids. Um, I mean, since 2008, childcare costs have written, risen more than three times the rate of wages. It's also often harder for people to rely on family back in the day. You still have people, obviously, who have their mum, their mums and dads, their granddads and their grandmas um, who are about, who can help them look after kids. But more people have to move for work now, partly because the Tories destroy traditional industries that were the heart of many communities. So there's a lack of secure, well-paid jobs in many towns across the country. So people don't have to move to big urban areas and leave those their, their, their other family behind, which makes it harder um, to have them to look after kids and then they have to spend more money on ludicrously expensive childcare. Transport costs, I mean, the disaster of privatisation, buses, which are under-discussed in this country. When I lived in Sheffield, well, I'm going to say that, I left when I was four, but, you know, my parents told me about how at the time, in the mid-80s, a bus ticket cost 2p and they were trying to make it free. Uh, since then, since deregulation and privatisation of the buses, the number of bus routes has halved and the price of buses has massively gone up. That's the same with train prices, obviously privatisation being a complete disaster there. Then there's jobs, the rise of insecurity. The, the idea of a job for life, obviously, is, is for most people, gone, dead. Uh, and people often now who are younger have to do zero-hours contracts. They, they are temporary workers, uh, for example, so they don't have that security as well, as well as the fact we've gone through the longest squeeze, as I've said, in wages uh, since the early 19th century, which has particularly hit younger people. Now, you know, you look at the future of younger people, you know, I often say when I try to defend the triple lock in pensions, which gives a guaranteed rise in pensioners to pensioners, when some people do try and do this generational war thing, and they go, well, why are we spending all this money on pension pensioners? when we should be looking after younger people and we do it, you know, that just happens because pensioners support the Conservatives. And there's truth in that. That's not the case for many of the pensioners watching or listening to this who do vote Labour or have never voted Conservative in their life. I know you exist. My mum is one of them. Um, but it is obviously true statistically that pensioners are far more likely to support the Conservatives. But I support pensions being protected and not least, not just because it's good for pensioners. We still have a lower state pension than other countries, by the way. And as I've said, we've got nearly 2 million pensioners in poverty. Um, but if you attack pensions now, you get younger people screwed now and then screwed later on when they're pensioners. We'll get, we're working for... that. The younger people have to work for longer um, as constantly the, uh, the pension age is increased um, and the amount of healthy life they'll have in retirement shrinks as a consequence. Um, but also their private pensions have been done over. Um, you know, there's a decline in in in, in that for, for huge numbers of younger workers compared to older workers. So again, they're going to ha get hammered as they get older um, as well. I've not even discussed the climate emergency. I mean, it's younger people now, gen the millennials and Gen Z who are going to suffer the most catastrophic consequences of that. As well as that, you know, younger people tend to have more progressive social values, which have been systematically attacked by the Conservatives. Um, and a lot of that is because younger people are more diverse. You have more people of colour. You have more younger people born abroad than used to be the case. You have more younger people coming out as LGBTQ. All of those things have come under attack. So it's not just their values. I mean, younger people tend to come from, or are more likely to come from the sorts of communities the Conservatives have gone out of their way to attack in the so-called culture wars. Now, when I say they've got contempt or hate the young, and I really do think they've got complete contempt for the young, who they see as these woke barbarians banging at the gates you know rishi sunak said you know he thinks universities are full of people who don't vote tory he said basically his latest student loan changes will mean 18 year old saddle with debt into their into their 60s and he said we've got to get far off from those university courses that are simply not paying their way because we are spending your money to subsidize these courses which are not producing the goods for people right so it's great news for the universities largely full of you know people who don't vote for us anyway i mean you know that's how they see these people and they don't really join the dots there because that's an existential issue for the Conservatives because 
what they've done is screwed up the lives. I've not even mentioned like the things like the destruction of youth services. I mean, re you really can just go on. And they've systematically attacked the, 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 the lives, the security of younger people. And their whole promise of what we call Thatcherism or neoliberalism or free market capitalism was we'll free the individual. The individual will be free. But it, it's, what they've delivered is insecurity. Insecurity isn't freedom at all. Younger people don't have security in their jobs. They don't have security in their homes. They don't have security in their wages. That's the truth of the matter. And it is true that older generations had the security of a welfare state, of housing security, uh, of of public services that were properly funded relative to where they are now. Um, you know, that's the social peace that was brought by the post-war Labour government. And it got torn to pieces, and it's younger people who now suffer the consequences, which is why their lot in life is going backwards. And, you know, what we've got to fight for is a country which is full of abundant wealth and resources and talent in which the lives of younger people and their potential are protected. And that's not what you get in this country. And we are going to suffer the consequences. I mean, I just realised, I mean, I haven't even said, like, per pupil funding being attacked, sixth form has been decimated. Like, it goes on and on and on. And the truth is that younger people, I think, are going to, as they come of age, and I've said, the oldest millennials are 42, the Tories have, have dug their own graves because the research shows that millennials are the first generation not to become more right-wing with age. I think the vengeance of younger people will be possibly the Tories trashed, driven out of power for a very, very long time to come. Doesn't mean Labour are good enough. I think I've made that position very clear. But the Tories have contempt for the young and they will pay the price. But we've got to harness what's happened to the anger that millennials and Generation Z face feel because of what they've gone through to build a different sort of society and that's the biggie isn't it please like subscribe and support us on patreon.com i'll see you in a bit